Hey everyone, how's it going? Justin here, and I'm back with another video. Um, in this video, I'm just going to be talking about uh, my stocking plans for the uh, for the rig tank. Um, so as I've said before, it is a 120 liter tank, um, which is uh, probably 30 gallons for Americans. Um, it is a cube, so uh, I am limited. Um, you know, as to what I can get, uh, probably no tangs, um, none of the biggest species anyway. Um, I think maybe, maybe a small coli for like a few months, but just the the chance of getting the, of them getting you know stressed out and stuff in a, a tank that size is quite high. Uh, I think so. Uh, I'm going to really try hard to avoid uh, to avoid getting. Uh, a tang. Um, in my last t uh, tank, the four foot uh, marine tank, I um, I know in one of the videos I said I was going to try and avoid tangs, um, but I ended up getting one for a few days. It was a Dumisiri tang, I believe, and I didn't realize how big uh, they got until I got home and actually researched. It was a huge impulse buy. It was really cheap in my uh, pet store. I think it was like twenty bucks or fifteen bucks or something, and I um uh, I got home and I did some more research and I found out it grew to like a foot or something just ridiculous size bigger than blue tangs and stuff it was um and it was it was probably this like maybe three and a half inches four inches when I got it um but yeah I caught it out a few days later and I just I gave it back to the store um because I was like what's the point if I'm gonna have to give it away I didn't you know I wasn't sure when I was gonna upgrade so but anyway um. So realistically, at this stage, um, these are some of the fish and corals of what I want to stock in this tank. Um, so the first fish is a maroon clownfish. Um, I know they're known as uh, as you know very aggressive fish, um, and obviously the most aggressive clownfish. But just the the striking colour of marines have always got me. Whenever I see one at a pet store, I'm just always in awe, and I'm like, oh man, I, you know, I wish I had this fish. Um, when I got my first marine tank in 2015, um, when I went to go pick up clownfish, I actually saw a maroon clown, quite a large one, in the tank next to it, and I just saw it, and I was like, wow, um, I wonder if, <laughs> I wonder how that would do in the tank. Obviously, a bit too big for the for the tank height then, but um. But I'm really thinking of a marine clown. Um, I, at first, I was thinking of a pair, but upon further research, it seems the pairs just take over the tank too quickly, and it seems they get more aggressive than just keep, uh, keeping a single uh, marine clown. But um, we will see. Um, my second is instead of getting a maroon, I was going to go with a pair of tomato clownfish or fire tomatoes I think something like that um, they can be aggressive but supposedly not as aggressive as maroon clownfish um, they are very very uh, bright red uh, clown and um, with age I don't think they dull down as much as maroon clowns uh, maroons kind of lose that striking orangey red color and they become uh, uh, like a, a darker brown or like a dark red uh, as they as they mature, but um, yeah. So a pair of tomatoes or maroon. Those will be it for the clownfish. Not both either. Um, my next fish is a lawnmower blenny or a bicolor blenny. Um, I've never kept a blenny, but from what I've heard, these two are. Uh, easiest to keep and some of uh, these two have really great personalities. Uh, Lawnmower Blenny will you know pick on algae and stuff and I'm pretty sure the bicolor will as well but um, yeah I they, they look they look really cool and I've seen them at pet stores and um, I think I will, will give one of them a try. Um, so now the last thing is actually not a fish, it's a invertebrate. And it is a coral banded shrimp. Um, I've been thinking about keeping one of these for quite a while as well now. 
I've been doing um, tons of research on it, and um, they they can be a bit funny <laughs> in tanks. Um, but from what I've heard, they are pretty peaceful towards everything except fellow coral banded shrimps. You can only keep a pair or one, and they may attack other shrimps. But um, but yeah, I'm pretty much thinking of keeping one of those, not a pair, just one. But uh, we'll see how we go. And um. Obviously, um, the stocking list could change, but this is really what I'm thinking of for now. Um, I was thinking of a six-line RAS before, um, but I don't know. I kind of feel like people just get like a six-line, you know, just because it's like one of the things that everyone gets, you know, like as a as a beginner RAS. So I'm like, you know, I, I was thinking, do I really want a six-line? Um, like I said before, I kept a McCoskers Flash Arras. Um, that was really nice, but I'm like, I don't know. But, um, you know, it can change again. If I see one at the store and I'm like, well, okay, it's actually pretty cool, then you never know. But, um, oh yeah, and there was one other fish, um, Valentini Puffer. I was pretty much set on that, but I do not know now because of the corals. Um, so, I, I don't know. We'll see. But that could also be added in. Um, but yeah. Now in terms of corals, um, if you didn't know, I'm kind of going for the softy tank with a very little amount of LPS. Um, you know, since I hadn't really kept corals before, I, I tried in my fourth. I only had it for a month, so I guess you can't really say, you know, I got too much out of it. But um, I just want to take it slow with corals. And I'm thinking of adding, um, you know, some nice looking zoas. Um, I really want to get a pulsating xenia. I know they, people say they grow like weed and stuff like that, but um, they are, they look pretty cool the way they move and stuff. So, and the last thing is, uh, I'd love to get a, a toxic green hammer. Um, obviously an LPS, and but we'll just have to see how the, you know, the tank parameters go. Um, I, you know, I really don't want to be dosing the tank at this stage. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes but uh, but that's pretty much it for the stocking at the moment obviously things can change and if I um, if I change my mind and stuff I'll, I'll let you guys know but um, that's pretty much it for now um, in terms of the tank everything's going well I'm recording this on the 14th of January uh, 2019 um, my diatomes are starting to really kick in uh, which is fine, you know, it's it's part of the cycling process. I mean, in my first marine tank when it started happening, I was like panicking. I was like, oh shit, what's this algae and stuff like that. But, you know, after years of research, it, it happens to everyone. You know, you can have a $15,000 setup and you're going to get diatom blooms. It's, you know, it's pretty hard to prevent them. So I'm just going to let that, you know, do its thing. Um, I'm pretty sure I will be adding a refugium in the next month or so. Uh, hopefully the next few weeks I will be ordering a few things. I'm going to try like a $20 Grow Light from eBay, which has some decent reviews. Um, and I will be getting some Kato uh, fairly soon, I hope. Um, uh, in terms of equipment, I have also put for sale my one of my wave makers. Or my only wave maker, the Aquail uh, Reef Circulator 10,000, um, because it's just it's too big. Uh, I don't know how the guy I bought it from had that wave maker in the tank. It is it takes up almost half the tank when you like put it on the side. It's it's quite large, um, but it is a really good wave maker. So um, in a four foot or something, or in a three foot, that would that'd be perfect. So. I'm hoping to sell that and replace it with a Tunzi Nano Stream, I think 6040, I think, or 6020. It's one of the really small ones. Uh, I think it's controllable, and yeah, apparently I've heard really good things about it. So either that or maybe a JBow, a JW2, I believe, or PP2. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for now. I've covered everything, so that's pretty much in terms of stocking. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see how we go. Obviously, things change, you know, when you you head into your uh, local uh, fish store. Um, 
for me, I have uh, three uh, marine shops in probably the space of uh, 10 kilometers, like max away from me. Um, so I'm pretty lucky in, in that sense. I have a wide array of options. Um, and where I live, there's plenty of fish shops, so it's it's very easily to impulse buy uh, stuff. So I just have to chill and um, and yeah, and just take it slow. But anyway, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. And uh, yeah, leave a comment and cheers. Thanks. See ya.